Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries and today I'm going to show you this really cool project that I'm super excited about. It's my new disc, but I guess it might also be my new dresser. If you've been following along for a while, or you've heard me mention in some of my previous videos, you may know that we are currently living in a very small studio style garage apartment. Storage space is a constant issue, as you can imagine. When we first moved in, I threw together a simple little desk next to the standalone closets that I built and I just made it work. But after two years of living here, I think it's about time to make this a little more efficient. The space where the chair is could be better utilized for storage, and since this was basically an extension off of my closet cabinets, it might look better if it was more like a dresser than a desk. So this is what I came up with, and honestly, I'm so super pumped about my new workspace and all of the extra storage that I was able to build into it. I can finally get my camera bags put away and get my printer off the floor. So if you're ready to see how this dresser desk came together, let's get building. I built this entire project from plywood and I used a little under two sheets of three quarter inch and then I just used some scrap quarter inch for the drawer bottoms. I've got the plans, details, and dimensions in the blog post linked below if you're looking for specifics, but as far as the assembly process goes, it was pretty straightforward and I'll show you in this video. I began by cutting down my plywood sheets. I ripped 18 inch wide strips from the sheet and then took them to my workbench to miter the corners. I chose to miter the corners to assemble the top and the sides. You can definitely just butt join this if you'd rather, but I just wanted a cleaner look at the corners. So I set my circular saw up to cut a 45 degree miter. Normally for cross cuts like this, I'll use my Craig AccuCut guide, but I couldn't tilt the blade with the sled attached. So I just use a straight edge and some clamps as a guide instead. I cut two sides, one end mitered 45 degrees and the other I just left at 90 degrees. Then I cut a top that had both sides mitered at 45 degrees. I laid these pieces out on the workbench and applied some painter's tape along the joints. And then I flipped it over and applied some glue. I used corner clamps to hold everything together nice and square while the glue dried. Again, the whole mitered corner thing isn't necessary. Simply butt joining the top to the sides using dowels or pocket hole screws or whatever method you prefer works fine too. While the glue dried, I began cutting down pieces for the middle divider and all of the shelves. I applied edge banding along the edges that will face the front of the desk, which again is optional. It just makes things look a little cleaner. Once the glue was dry on the top and the sides, I used pocket holes and screws to assemble the middle divider and all of the shelves. My design allowed for the open shelf in the middle to be about 18 inches off the floor, which is a good height for my rollout seat. And since I was installing caster wheels onto my seat, I also installed the bottom shelf to be the height of my caster wheels off the floor too. That way the bottom shelves would line up on both the rolling cart that I'll build later and the drawers over here on this side too. I also made sure that the open shelf was tall enough to fit my printer. And then I left a small space at the top for two short drawer boxes. 
Again, all the dimensions are detailed in the blog post linked below. I used pocket holes and screws to attach all of the shelves in place and I made sure to place the pocket holes where they wouldn't be seen. This made it a little bit difficult to get some of the pocket hole screws driven, but it is what it is and I just didn't want to see the pocket holes. Next up was the drawers. I installed 16 inch ball bearing drawer slides onto the desk where the drawers will be placed. Then I proceeded to make the drawer boxes. I love making drawers. I know a lot of people hate it, but it's absolutely my favorite part of any project. I made four drawer boxes of equal size, except for the height. The two top drawers are only three and a half inches tall and the two bottom drawers were six inches tall. I cut dados along the bottom of the drawer box sides to install the quarter inch plywood bottom, then assembled them together with pocket holes and screws. I have a detailed guide that I will link below for how to build and install drawer boxes if you want to see the exact process that I use. Once all four drawer boxes were built, I installed them into the desk. Note that these drawers are all three quarter inch inset to allow for the drawer fronts to be inset later. Next, I cut down the drawer fronts to allow for an eighth inch gap along all sides and applied edge banding along the edges just to make it look a little cleaner. Again, edge banding is always an optional step. Then I installed the fronts onto the drawers using one and a quarter inch wood screws from the inside of the drawer boxes. At this point, all that's left is the rolling seat. I cut down my plywood pieces to build this little rolling cart and applied edge banding on all the sides that will be exposed. Now, this seat rolls right into the outlet that is behind my desk. The top of the seat sits right at the middle of the outlet, so I made this rolling cart about two inches narrower than my actual desk. That left about a two inch space behind it for the cords to plug in without the cart hitting them. If you don't have an outlet there, obviously you could make your seat deeper. My desk was 18 inches deep overall, so I made this cart 16 inches deep overall. Now, this seat will look like two inset drawer fronts on the front side. So the top and the bottom sides will show, but the sides of the cart will be hidden by the fake drawer fronts. So I cut the side pieces three quarter inch narrower than the bottom piece. I used wood glue and screws to assemble the sides and the back of the cart, and then I glued and screwed the bottom in place. It's upside down here in the video, just in case you can't tell what's going on. The bottom of the desk will have kind of like a toe kick. This will help hide the casters. So while I had the cart flipped upside down, I attached a toe kick about an eighth inch shorter than the height of the caster wheels, about one and a half inch in from the front edge. I just glued and clamped this in place. Then I installed the caster wheels. I put two non-swivel wheels at the back and two swivel wheels at the front. I used washers with the screws because the holes were too large and I used longer screws on the outside but shorter screws on the inside because I didn't want screw points sticking up through the bottom into my storage cart. 
Now the top piece is the lid to the storage cart, so it won't be attached, but the front of the cart will be fake drawer fronts. I love faking slats and drawer fronts using a small dado cut on the table saw. So you may have seen me use this method before, but I cut a piece of plywood to fit over the front of the cart, leaving an eighth inch gap along the top and an eighth inch gap along the bottom. Then I set the table saw up to cut a quarter inch deep down the middle of this piece. Then ta-da, fake drawer fronts. <laughs> I simply glued these onto the front of the cart, leaving my eighth inch gap at the top and bottom so it looks like real drawer fronts. Then just to help the top piece sit in place, I glued and nailed two pieces of scrap plywood on the underside of the top so that when it sits down into the cart, it helps it stay in place. As a side note, I originally planned to upholster this top piece for a padded seat, but then I decided that I liked it better without the fabric. But if you wanted some padding on your seat, feel free to upholster the top. And before finishing everything, I remembered that I never attached the toe kick piece to the actual desk. So I went back and attached this piece using pocket holes and screws from the inside so you wouldn't see them. Then I gave it a couple coats of poly and installed these simple black handles onto the drawers and the cart seat, and then it was ready to bring inside. I emptied out my old desk and removed it, and you can kind of see here, it was a little janky and you could tell I just threw this together. Then I brought my new desk inside. One thing to note about this is that I had a baseboard already installed here and I was just lazy and didn't really want to cut it. So I just butted the desk up to it and I actually like it better that way because I can run my cords through the gap between the desk and the wall instead of having to drill holes in the actual desk to run my cords for my printer and my laptop. I got everything from my old desk organized and put away and I even had one drawer left over that I didn't have anything to put in it. I haven't had a spare drawer since we moved in here two years ago. I'm sure I'll eventually fill it with something, but for now I'm so thankful for the extra storage space that this project provided. It blends right into my closet cabinets and I'm just really, really happy with how this turned out. It's simple, clean, a little unexpected, and a whole lot practical, at least for my situation. So if you've enjoyed this build, I'd love if you'd subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on all of the fun to come. And if you'd like to know more about this project, be sure to head to the blog post link for all the details and plans. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, happy building.